<laughs> Welcome to Build. I'm Laura Haywood. Today I have three theatrical veterans joining me who together have 30 Broadway credits to their names. They star together in The Prom, a brand new original show that's Broadway's best reviewed musical of the season. I've already seen it three times and it's been open under a month. So I'm beyond excited to sit down with superstars Beth Level, Brooks Ashmanskis, and Caitlin Kinnanen. Let's take a look at The Prom. This show makes me so happy. And Look. I'm so happy that you're here. Brooks, Beth, and Caitlin. Thank you. Hi. Congratulations Hi. on the prom. Thank you so much. Caitlin, why don't you start and give us the uh, sort of the elevator pitch about what this show's oh, all gosh. about. Elevator <laughs> pitch. All right, here we go. Um, it's about a 17-year-old girl who wants to take her girlfriend to the prom, and the PTA says no, and they decide to cancel the prom. Uh, these four veteran Broadway performers uh, who are a little down on their luck and in a bad show, um, decided to put themselves back in the spotlight by going to Indiana and trying to save the day, and shenanigans ensue. That's a great description. You really <laughs> nailed it. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. See, we would have said, it's about There's four these, Broadway these actors. It's elderly. <laughs> depending on who you ask. <laughs> Whose worlds collide. Uh, so you play the 17-year-old yes. girl, and you play the 18-year-old year old. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, yes, Brooks and I and uh, Chris Sieber and Angie Schwar play the four New York actors. And the show opens uh, uh, with at an opening Eleanor, night party. Eleanor Roosevelt, the musical, which is a huge flop. And then we realize that we need to get some more, some a cost celeb or anything to get press. And we hear about this situation in Indiana. So we go to save the day, and lo and behold... Make everything worse. We make everything worse. <laughs> and maybe we go to save her, and maybe she saves us. Yeah, absolutely. It's clear, I think, that your characters are a little bit out of touch with the real world. Just um, a titch. Uh, when, when your character, I believe she says, we had to tell the story of Eleanor Roosevelt because no one had ever, ever heard, heard of her. her. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Dee Dee kind of lives in a bubble, bless yeah. her heart. Um, <laughs> but, but she ends up somehow being so lovable while right? being sort of so detestable. Exactly. Exactly. You know? She has to be lovable. You just can't have a character, you know, you can't dislike someone. She has such a nice journey, or dare I say, arc. Oh. Oh, oh. thank you. I went to acting school. <laughs> oh. I just threw up a little in my tongue. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, uh, Brooks, tell us a little bit oh. about your character. Uh, he's uh, homosexual. Yes. What? <laughs> and? What? <laughs> Uh, and he is a colleague of uh, Dee Dee's, uh, who they've done a lot of shows together. He's get, you know been relatively successful uh, in on Broadway, and uh, you know is I think just a big-hearted, sweet, funny guy mm -hmm. who uh, needs a little tune-up on his life skills. So you two have um, 13 and 14 Broadway credits, respectively. Did you feel at all like you were cast to play yourselves? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It was written for uh, us, which is a little scary. Yeah, it's, it, because <laughs> the writers a, are insane. <laughs> a heightened version. I like to call Didi my evil twin. Right. Mm -hmm. So kind of a heightened sure, version. A turned so, up version of ourselves. Of who yeah. we are. But neither of you have that that no. egotism. No, I know. You're both very sweet. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I think is so brilliant about this show, which actually sort of gave me pause when I first heard about it, when it was worked out in Atlanta, and we'll go, we'll go back and sort of talk about the origins, but 
I heard it talked about simultaneously as a very sincere coming of age story about like a real political issue. And then I heard it as talked about as a send up of Broadway that was almost satirical. And I thought, how in the world can they do both of those things at the same time? Like maybe pick one and just go with that. But then when I saw it, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know, two different kinds of fabric woven together to make the perfect tapestry. That's beautiful. Well, so. I'm going to cross stitch that. Yeah. Yes, do <laughs> Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, did you have, did you, uh, Caitlin, did you guys work on the two different parts, like the Indiana uh, teenager story separately? Like, did you guys, or did no, it all come together? It all as just one? kind of came together as one. I don't think there ever was a point when we like really split the two. They actually, work together really well um and you can't have one without the other in the mm -hmm. show yeah i don't think it would be nearly as successful if no. it was just one or it was interesting other. talking to chad bagelin and max sklar who wrote the music and the lyrics because they have written a show that represents her uh -huh. and they've written a score that represents the broadway people so it's a very eclectic blending uh -huh. as well as emotional blending of the people in indiana and us crazy people from broadway right yeah you guys find a little heart and you find a little Zaz. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was actually talking to Matt Sklar, who's a friend of mine, and he was telling me some stories about the origins of the show. Um, there were some differences in some of the numbers back then. Um, Brooks, was there a number that changed um, in Atlanta, or no, in the lab? He told me there was one, maybe I'm leading you down well, the road. No, but... you're not. I, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the opening section uh -huh. of... <laughs> this show. show has, I think, what we have now on Broadway is probably the, the, the 75th, 75th version. version. Wow. And, there was and I'm, we're almost not exaggerating. No, we, there, you're with, not with at all. rehearsals <laughs> and labs and workshops and then out of town and then, you know, uh, uh, all the rehearsals here. Excuse me, I had a stroke. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, that time of day. Um, um, so I don't know what that means either. <laughs> stroke diver. But uh, it, w there were so many different versions. I think I'm stroking out because I get that feeling that Beth and I had in Atlanta where we changed the lyrics that day and then try to do it. Ooh. I they carried were, lyrics in my bra. bra. They would change the lyrics and on I would them look every up, day. Like, what is today? Oh, okay. And then we would go out and like... <laughs> Oh, Which day is it? Which yeah. day is it? What lyric is it? So that number, definitely. Mm -hmm. Right up till previews here, pretty much. You know, yep. it was like... Now it works. So how yeah. long ago was that, that you were in that lab, that first lab? The fir Well, the first, like, r reading of it was, uh -huh. a, it was four about years seven ago. years ago. Oh, well, you're... <laughs> yep. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> Where we did just, like, the first... Table act. read. Yeah. And it was, just sitting uh, no, around no, Maybe there was one song that Matt sang, I think, and... And then over those seven years, it's been... And in Atlanta, that was four years ago? No, Atlanta, Atlanta was, was two, two years two. ago. Okay, so I think the point is that Broadway shows take a really long time to get to the, the stage, yes. no pun intended, where the audience gets to see it in its final form. And uh, I think it's always important and really interesting to talk about all the changes that happen, all the work that goes on before you even get to previews. Mm -hmm. um, Caitlin, how long have you been involved with the project? I've been involved for four years, which is when we did the first 29-hour uh, table read of it. Um, they had done like stuff with it before, but four years ago is when there was a full score, yeah. full script. They hired the entire cast to come in and put it on its feet with music stands. So four years. Yeah, and you're still playing a 17 year old, <laughs> and yes. that's amazing. And you yes. know, it's and it's believable. But <laughs> Thank you're not you. 17. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and the fact that this is your third Broadway show and you are like the the relative rookie on this panel is pretty remarkable. Yeah, it's amazing working with these guys every day is like a masterclass every single night. Uh, any particular lessons that you can credit these two with? Um, I was actually uh, <laughs> careful. <laughs> um, I was talking about this yesterday that like I feel. Like, I've just walked away with self-confidence through this project. Watching them throughout the years and in the rehearsal processes have been, it's been incredible. They are, it, whether they really are or not, I don't know, but they appear to be fearless. And the commitment that they give every night and that they gave every day in rehearsal was just outstanding to watch and just so cool to be a part of. And so, yeah, I just really, it's like, oh, wait, I can do this. I can be confident. Beth, do you feel <laughs> fearless? <laughs> um, let's just put it this way. Most times, yes. I 
when you particularly when you have a creative team that is you're, you're in a room where you're so safe, I feel like I can throw anything up against the wall and we'll all be patient to see what sticks. Mm -hmm. So in that way, yes, I feel fearless. And the, the material, the craftsmanship of what I do is so perfect that it's easy to jump into, with, without fear, jump into the water. Mm -hmm. yeah, especially with this material, because, like we said, because it was written with us in mind, or at least, you know, the things, they tried to play to our strengths. Mm -hmm. And so anyone who's feeling strong about what they do will be less fearful of, of doing it. Also, I find that it's really fun to fail in front of these people. And I fail all the time in the show. You know, I, I like to... Th throw it out there and I have a it's one of the things I find most funny is when something doesn't work. Oh god, he's impossible. <laughs> I like fantastic. to think we're, we're, we're big risk takers mm -hmm. in the room, in a safe room and that's all of us have discovered I think the show is better because we've been mm -hmm. uh, we have risked yeah. failing yeah. and you know and then they tell us what's funny what doesn't work is that note too high is that note is what so it's really it's a privilege is there such a thing as a note too high for oh, you yes there uh. absolutely is i don't know how you hit those I notes i don't uh, either um i also don't know how you do it eight times a week without like throwing your whole voice out what kind of warm-ups do you do, all three of you? What kind of, like, self-care do you practice to keep your you instruments in shape? You ask the two shape? of them will answer this question. Wait, you don't have an answer? No, I have the answer. It's no. Nothing. nothing? No. I, you don't I'm warm a up? a terrible example. You don't sit backstage going, Brooks Ashmanskis, Brooks Ashmanskis. <laughs> God, no. Caitlin Kinnanen. I felt like yeah, when I was practicing go. saying your I names, I was doing that. Just like Caitlin Kinnanen. Um, yeah. Your, your voice is a muscle, so right. it gets... Okay. My shows are my workout. Yep. Mm -hmm. my, that's almost my warm up. I do very, I think you and I are kind of similar. We do a lot of humming just yeah. to make sure it's there. If I did a full, full warm up, I'm not sure I could do the I'd show. I'd have nothing left. So if I'd I have did a full left. warm up. I so once I once I do some light humming and stuff, and poor people, if I'm in a cab, I'm like, sorry, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I do it. I do it on the subway every day. I I'm that too. crazy person who's just like, mm. and I look and make sure the person by me has, you know, earphones yeah. in or something, so they won't be oh, like, I don't oh, even, I don't even do that. People. I'm just like, you're listening to me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like <laughs> creepy dead eyes. <laughs> well, it reminds oh, me of a line from the show. Like pe most people pay premium prices to listen to this. Right, you just <laughs> got a pro bono. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it, or you just get up and you go, ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. I have to warm up. Can you imagine? <laughs> you should try that. I can just imagine the YouTube video, Beth Level, showtime Lost, on, the mind. Train, <laughs> on the A train. <laughs> Do you, how often do you crack each other up? Because the show is so Every funny, night. and you guys really are these archetypal mm -hmm. caricatures that even when you're not saying anything, your body language is so funny. <laughs> I can just imagine you're trying to crack each other up in a way. Brooks gets me every night. It's He's bad, but you know I'm what? We know the audience the would ever. The audience would never know. No, because to me, I would never, ever, ever crack up on stage. That's not serving this story. No. But some days it's a real challenge. Uh -huh. well, and also these, clearly a professional. these parts, you know, we I think we do enjoy each other. Part yeah. of the, the chemistry that was so easy on this show because we've known and loved each other for a long time. So it was it's it's necessary to have that energy in certain scenes, you know, the scenes in the hotel room and things. We yeah. uh, enjoy the situations we are in together. Absolutely. You know, so it's, I think it's a great energy to have that sort of, it's semi-dangerous, but it's, that's great. It's and I like, think the like, audience feels that mm -hmm. too, you know? Yeah. Again, that's kind of a, that risk thing yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, a little tightrope walk. Yeah, you it's know. fun. Is this the first Smart. time you guys have done a show together? A full production. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel sort of like this show's going to run for a really long time, and then whenever you are ready to step away from it, you're going to like tour together. <laughs> okay. okay. Or like do a go, cruise together. Go to Vegas. Oh, yes. Vegas. Yeah. 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 Reno. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Flagstaff. Caitlin, how much <laughs> input did you have into developing the background for your character? Um, I I wouldn't say the background of it. The background was pretty set when mm -hmm. I came onto the project. Um, the writers have done a really good job of like incorporating Caitlinisms into the role, I think, just because I don't, I just am who I am, and therefore that's what they got, and they were really willing to say, like, okay, this is a thing you do, we're going to add more of that. Um, so I'd say we just, like, got to add more to the background of Emma. Um, I feel like we're, Emma and Caitlin are pretty similar, and they're, like, 
awkwardness. Um, <laughs> and so they were just really great and fully embraced that and let me be myself on stage. So you're talking about sort of physical... Um, physical and vocally and like things I would say in the room would end up in the script. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was really cool. I felt like I learned a lot about Emma from the way her bedroom's decorated. Yes. And yeah. I was, especially because I was there, you know, for a repeat yeah. uh, performance, I was like, oh, look, she has a Hermione 2020 yes, sticker on her guitar. Yeah, the bedroom and she really likes really Riverdale. Cool. Yes. <laughs> you know, like the way her bedroom's decorated. <laughs> and I just, I felt like that was, it. the, the show, while certainly the issue of, uh, a teenage lesbian not being allowed to bring her girlfriend to prom is set in a certain time in history and hopefully very soon will seem like a period piece. I also just felt like the tiny little details that the designers put in there locked it really into being so current. Yeah, it's it's a story that it unfortunately you say it is like a period piece, but it happens every year. Yeah. Like every year there are more stories that this is happening to people in the middle of America. Um, and it's horrible. And so the fact that it is so current and we are telling this story now is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people reach out to me through social media saying that we're telling their story. And that's horrible, but also like wonderful that they get a chance to see themselves yeah. portrayed honestly on stage. Mm -hmm. What are the stage doors like? They're like a little taller. <laughs> Oh, that's I mean, all you're going to say? A push. I'll There's wait. not a knob. There's a push. <laughs> you mean great. like the people outside the stage door? Yes, Who are you props. meeting? What stories are you hearing? You know, they're all very sweet. I, I, I always think, God, they must be sick of us by now. We've, we've just sat there for looking at our faces. For, you know, it's so sweet that they, you know, in any other job, people don't leave their cubicle and people go, you were terrific. What? Can I get your, you know, it's very, I think it's very sweet. And I'm stunned by it all the time. It's a, a lot of... Uh, it's actually pretty mixed stage-wise, but it's a lot of young people, and those are the ones that really, they just knock your your breath out of your body when they're, they're like, they just have tears they're in their eyes. And they're like, and they with get, joy. They can't believe that their story is being told, and it's just, it, I'll cry talking about it. It's just... And then you Very have powerful. other people that are so excited to see a, an original Broadway musical <laughs> yeah. 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 succeed so well. It is not based so many on levels. a movie. No. It's, not <laughs> based on, it's not based on a book. Nothing. Nothing. It is original out of the heads of the creators. Yeah. And man, we need more of that. Yes. I love it. Yeah. And it's so like singable and danceable. The cast album is out as of today. today. Um, have you sat down and listened to it? Or is yes. it just like I, I hear this eight times a week? We had a little listening party uh -huh. last week. It's yeah, all been one go. long day like last yeah. week. But, uh, and listened to it on good speakers and everything. And it was, it was uh, these guys sound astonishing. He sounds, I he sound sounds sort of like too. just a sort of screaming. Stop it. No. Uh, toward the fabulous. pitch, you know. No, it all sounds great. It's really well produced. What is, what is the thing that you'll take away from the prom that you think would surprise people the most? What an audience would take away from it, or what we? What you? What you would take away from the, the journey? Well, the, the love of what we do. Yeah, and you to think be able to do it with people? these people. Yeah, you know. I mean, what would surprise people would be constant injuries. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, I no, I mean you're but, you jumping know, I mean, on things. And I'm old, you know, and yeah. jumping around and screaming is it, uh, that's that that's something that I now can take with me for the rest of my life. Those injuries, those scars. Yeah, awesome. you know. I hope you're doing. But I meant the I first therapy. Would, I think all of us would also agree. I'm not sure I've ever experienced a show where I have so much joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is so joyful. And yeah. that is shared with my scene partner, the audience. It's just, yeah, no. by the end of the curtain call, the whole place is vibrating mm -hmm. with love and joy. That's the only way I can put it. And that, that um, will be with me forever and ever and it's ever. It's rare. I'm so thrilled that you referred to the audience as your scene partner. Well, they are. Because yeah. this is something I advocate constantly, that the audience needs to be considered the collaborator instead of the customer. Oh, absolutely. And I can tell from what you three and your incredible co-stars and ensemble are doing that you really believe that. Oh, yeah. And um, it, there's not a lot of fourth wall breaking. It's not that kind of scene partner. Mm -hmm. But the energy exchange is just unparalleled and by the time we actually get up to dance during that mm. during the, your bows when the whole house just jumps to their feet 
it's a party we're all invited to. It's a prom yes, for everybody. Really. Yes. It is. It is. It's why we do it. I mean, it's it's the, the people always ask, what's it like to do the same show eight times a week for however long it runs or however long you're with it? The it isn't the same show every night right. because of the audience. It it can't be. The molecular structure of the room is different. True. You know. And that one show, even though we do it eight times a week, that one th last night will never happen again. No. Never. It's a singular moment that's exchanged between us and our scene partners. Yeah. So that never gets old because it reinvents itself every single show. That's why I, as an audience member, can come back and see the show again yep. and again because I don't feel like I know what's going to happen. Even if I know the lines, even if I know the songs, right. there will always be something that surprises me. And we're still discovering. We're oh, still yeah. Still discovering. One of my favorite moments now, sorry, we're talking amongst ourselves. One of yeah. my favorite moments now <laughs> is when I come to you and you point to me at the very end after I'm going, yeah, yeah. I, and that never happened until about, what, last week? I'm like, how could, how could I have missed that moment? I'm never, no, proud of it. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I get a little bit, it's, it's, you know, I was talking about the duality of the show, how there are these two sort of, two shows in one, and I also feel sort of like no show has ever made me want to like dance and weep at the same time, uh, the way this one does. Oh, I can get choked up talking about it, and then I can also try to des describe, especially the Broadway archetype characters, and I can't even get the words out because like I'm crying from laughing. I think it's such a special show because of that, that it really is this like classic musical comedy, but then it sneaks up on you with this like heart of gold that you don't expect from it. And it just hits you. And it is this like, you're laughing, you're crying and you just leave the theater feeling every emotion possible. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you before we finish about uh, the Macy's Thanksgiving day parade. It uh, was cold. Freezing. And you were, you were sleepless. Hello. Hello. I know. <laughs> um, I believe someone on Twitter said you deserved a Tony Award just yes. for that uh, going Thank sleeveless and doing that performance in the cold. <laughs> I have never been so cold in my um, life. <laughs> Uh, that was not the most surprising or controversial part of that Indeed. performance. <laughs> Alas. Um, and there was a lot of attention on the, the girl, girl kiss, yes. which was about the most G-rated chaste thing I've ever <laughs> seen on television. And yet there was, there were certain, uh, like demographics, I guess that were upset about it. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it was an interesting moment. Um, I feel like Izzy and I went into it just not even really thinking about it. It's just a part of the show we do. It's a part of the story we tell. Um, to us, it is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a community where it was accepted and normalized and it wasn't an issue. Um, and so I didn't even really think about it. And then we performed at the parade and we got off the stage and Twitter blew up. And it was interesting to see everyone's comments on it. But what was really amazing to me, and I feel like to a lot of us, was that for every message of hate and backlash we got, we got 10 times the love and support and camaraderie. And having that come at you felt so special and just overwhelming mm -hmm. um, because I don't know. It it made people see that on stage and see that it is normal and it is accepted and that there is a community that welcomes you and supports you. I thought it also just the the backlash in itself was just a message of how necessary this show is. Absolutely. And, yes. it, you know, if there is anybody who's like, oh, yeah, maybe I can see that 10 years ago happening. It's like, no, that that it's still happening. This yes. is a show about now. This is not a period piece. It's and, not. And if we needed uh, proof that that's the case that you know it was so I I had the same thing as you like I as I was watching it I was like yay the prom yeah not a big um, deal <laughs> yeah. but then after I realized that you know we're what what's the line we're we're liberal democrats from Broadway okay. yes. yeah um you know I'm one <laughs> of those too yep and it was it was good to be reminded how important a show like this and its yes. messages are. Um, so you had no, you guys had no preparation where they were like, look, this might be there a thing. There was some, like it definitely was talked about and it was like, we're gonna do this, there may be some backlash, but here we are. And it seemed mostly, sorry, that it was- no, you're fine. Because we all had the same experience of, we, were, we did the rehearsal of yeah. it a couple of days before at night uh, for the cameras and and it just sort of crossed, I, myself at least, it just crossed my mind while they were doing yeah. it. I was like, oh, wow, that's, I'm so glad we're doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is so great. A big way of getting this message out. And 
And then I, our director, Casey Nicola, who was there, uh, was like, and they're, they're going close up on the kids. It's so great. There. It was, it was, so it was a great thing. You know what you know, it first talk about to me living in a bubble. Is yeah. You your character is a guy who and I don't think this really counts as a spoiler but who never got to go to his prom. Right. Um and he ends up living vicariously through Emma a little bit yes. and finding this pride and I feel like there are kids at home who like are watching that kiss or who are seeing the coverage maybe even like an interview like this and they're feeling like oh, that's what I never had, and exactly. that's what I needed. Or maybe even adults who never had it, who are like, times are changing. Yes. And, I, yeah. Speaking of the stage door situation, I've uh, just as many young people, I've talked to people who are my age or even older, who are so moved by that p part of this character, especially his uh, relationship with, with uh, Caitlin's character, uh, that they are Barry Glickman, mm -hmm. you know, and... Like, I had it easy in my life compared to them because of them, right? And they are, they're so moved by the fact that, that a pr man of a certain age, you know, gets to, gets to have that feeling of being asked to the prom. You know, it's heavy. It yeah, kills me every sucks. night, eight times a week. I'm, I, you know, I'm not trying to make anything happen. It's just, it's happening to me right this second, you know? Can it's we throw moving. a prom for all of those people I who know. never yes. had one? It's the, on That's stage what we're doing at the Long Acre Theater. Yeah, yeah, right yeah every now. night, eight, eight times a week. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. You're so um, welcome. We have a few audience questions, oh, including one that comes from Twitter, yep. and that is oh. from Cassandra underscore Faith. If you weren't doing Broadway, what could you see yourself doing? Wow. I would be a florist. Really? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, my mom was a florist. My Wait, mom really? was a florist. I didn't Shut know up. that. Oh my gosh. That's insane. <laughs> what? I, are you kidding? No. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we'll talk later. Sorry, Cassandra. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Cassandra. What would you do? Do you know? Uh, sleep. Okay, he would oh. sleep. No, I really, I'm trying to think. I, I can't do anything else. I, I can't either. That's why I've had 13 Broadway shows. <laughs> right. But if I could, if I was financially able, yeah. I would open up animal sanctuary oh, that's and run great. it <laughs> with all of my friends who were unemployed. That's great. Thank you. So I'd donations can be made yeah. to... <laughs> <laughs> and you can do the flowers. Yes. The flowers yeah. would be awesome. Yes. Well, I'd, I'd like to I'd... be a chef, actually, so oh, I could do the food. Oh, you could do the food. Yeah. I love Bye. it. Thank you. Thanks. And by the way, let's do it. Tonight. Yeah. So you're gonna do the animal. You're gonna like just don't cook any of her animals. No, no, no. Yeah, there. Like, oh. No. Except, what what <laughs> do you mean? A Springer spaniel. It. Stop it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I went there. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, let's take a couple more a couple more audience questions. Oh, the lights. Oh. Yeah. Um, do you do anything special to fully immerse yourself to the role that you are playing? Well, with this show, it's a little different because it's so close to home. To, so preparing for it is has been our whole lives, really, um, and because the material is so well put together, it's it takes less to do it, and it's a it's a weird feeling in a way because usually, especially the parts that uh, Beth and I play and have played our, our entire careers, it's uh, it's a lot of work, and this is less work because it's so well written, um, but mostly it's just about listening to not only the people on stage, but it's about listening to the world around you and getting your head out of your phone and out of a computer and experiencing life, then you're prepared to do anything on stage. Yeah. It also helps that I have this wig. I, once I put the wig on, and I am in a full sequined gown, and I get into that at five minutes before places, and it's like, click. Yeah. There she is, here comes <laughs> Dee Dee, watch out please. And I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. And you said you're, for you, you're very similar to Emma. Yeah. Like, <laughs> did you have to do any kind of transformation process? I don't think transformation process, but for me, it's really just been about listening to other people. And I found a lot of Emma through listening to other people's stories mm -hmm. who have gone through this. So it's just listening. It's great. Thank you. We have a question over here. Hey. Hi. I was just curious um, to see, uh, do you recall like each of your own first Broadway musicals, like attending a first Broadway musical? And are there still aspects of those musicals that you take with you on your own performances? Oh, that's a great question, thank you. Yes, I can't remember honestly what the first one I saw because I was very young when I saw the first shows because my father was great about taking me to the theater 
And uh, but definitely the one that went boom was a chorus line. Me too. Uh, you know, it really. My mother was a florist. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Our florist mothers took us to see a chorus line. Uh, no, but that one. It was easy to connect to because I already had an inkling that I wanted to perform, even at a young age, and that's about performance and what it takes and what it can do and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that was one, and do I take it with me? Yes. I do moves in the show. It's so that, true. Because I make them up, so, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, that are from, they are Michael Bennett's choreography. It's, you know. Uh, it's, it's, I want to see one right now. Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> I had to ask. I had to ask. No, because if I get up, I think my back will yeah, go right. out and I'll Fair just enough. be like, that, that old man. Um, I saw Grease and I was on the very right. back row and I could hardly see the actors. But what I took away from that is I want to do that and what a privilege it was to be in what uh, the sanctuary of theater. So I kept striving to become the person that would be on stage. So that's with me every show. A, a gratitude for one thing, just so much gratitude. My, the first show I saw was Spring Awakening and it was because I was auditioning for it. And so I went and saw it and I ended up booking that show. Um, and so, yeah, for me, I take that with me every day and that experience taught me so much. So it's all kind of just wrapped up into one and comes with me everywhere I go. I, Thank I you. wasn't going to bring this up on stage, but I almost started crying backstage because Beth was in the first Broadway show I ever saw 26 years ago, the show that changed my life. And obviously I'm taking that everywhere. Yes. So it's, Theater, uh, I've, seen, I've seen all three shows that you've done on Broadway. I've seen, That's crazy. I've seen <laughs> each of you do at least five. And um, so, you know, you're changing lives. Thank you. Oh. Changed mine. Thank you. Theater. It's time for yeah. one more question. Um, so with this show, you talked about this a little bit. Do you feel more deeply connected to the audience and fans because of the subject matter and how it resonates with people? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think because it's such, it's so cause and effect mm -hmm. what we do, even Dee Dee, you know, Dee Dee doesn't have this uh, storyline, but I feel how the whole show in all of its aspects resonates so deeply and on so many levels with an audience the audience members, and I, it, that's kind of rare. Yes, I mean, especially I, in, in, in the ways in which this show, because we can focus very, very easily focus on the, uh, the importance of the piece because of Emma's story, the fact that she's not allowed to go to the prom, et cetera, and homophobia and all those things, which is, is sadly easy to talk about um, because we're all fluent in it because we live in, in a society that has trouble with that. Uh, sadly. But what I love about this show in particular, and many shows, is the power of the laughter mm -hmm. and the joy that you, Beth was talking about earlier is nuts, you know? And that the joy overweighs the, the, the yuckiness. And, and it's even in their, their selfish, narcissistic ways, all they want to do is good. All she wants to do is just go to the prom. Everyone, everyone is just wanting to do right. Yeah. And that's lovely. Even the mother who is, you know, right. the, yeah. portrayed by Courtney Collins, you know, the, who is having some trouble with the facts of homophobia and et cetera. She's just trying to help her kid out. Mm -hmm. She's just trying to do the best she knows how to do. And every single person in the show Every single person in the show is changed for the better, to quote a musical. <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, can we just say the number of Broadway references, the inside yeah. jokes for those of us who know all of the shows inside and out. Yeah, for you. It was, I mean, it's, there are so many layers to this show. And yes. if, I, if the two colors of fabric blended together, this is like the thread that's. Yeah. And that I think that's why it's such a celebration every night totally. for four to five minutes. Yeah. as a, a connection and a celebration of all that is musical comedy yeah. and all that art can do. Well, it's really two and a half hours of celebration. <laughs> Thank you, exactly. There's not the when you're standing minute, up and right, dancing. There's the five minute dance stand party. <laughs> <laughs> mm, maybe check with a person behind you. Right. There is the five minute dance party like yes. that feels like we're all there at the prom. Um, but the whole thing, this whole show, it's not just a celebration of, of you know, like growing up and figuring out who you are or realizing that maybe you've embraced fame a little too much. It's a celebration of what the theater can do in terms of taking people out of their real life problems for a few hours, but also 
reminding us what we can do about real life problems at yeah. the same time. And I couldn't recommend this show more highly. I've already seen Thank it three you. times. I'm definitely going to go back to see it again. And it's really just been such an honor to have the three of you here Thank on you. stage with me Thank today. You. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks, guys. Thank you.